601. We have the continue button. Okay, thanks, Marie. Um, so this is our scheduled work session to, uh, to talk about the city council vacancy. I'd first like to welcome Sanam. Uh, this is your first, I guess, tentatively official meeting. You were sworn in earlier today, is that true? Yes. Okay, great. Great, and we'll do, an, we'll do a ceremonial swear in at the July 12th council meeting in front of the public at the beginning of the meeting so that that uh, gets the due recognition there that it deserves, so. Thank you. Um, thank you for being a part of our group. Mm -hmm. um, so the first item today on our agenda is non-arranged participation. I don't know if there's anybody that would like to speak under non-arranged, um, Alex, Dan, or any member of council, if you have something off the different topic, I guess. Okay, well, seeing none, we'll, we'll go on to number two, which is discussion of our, our city manager vacancy. Um, we started this process uh, last year uh, after uh, Courtney Nichols resigned, um, effective uh, November 9th, I think it was, or 10th. And um, at the last meeting in uh, um, October, uh, city council appointed Justin uh, Breyer as the interim city manager. Uh, we then proceeded to advertise the position uh, through the end of, um, well, really through, it's open until filled actually, I guess, technically, but we took applications through early January, uh, received some type, somewhere around 40 or 45, I think, and um, whittled that down through uh, various meetings uh, into early April and then conducted our, our interviews with three candidates that are in the packet um, on May 8th, I think it was. And that's the last discussion that we've had. I did, uh, I did offer a few comments under my mayor report following the, uh, the city manager interviews, but this is our first formal meeting to discuss uh, the vacancy. I don't know if anybody has any thoughts on the process or thoughts on where we are or thoughts on where to proceed. Um, I sort of made my position pretty well known, I think, under my previous comments. I, uh, I, think, our, I think we're lucky to have three good candidates uh, in the final running, uh, but I think that our current interim city manager stands out and I think he's done a good job. Um, I think he's respected by our staff. I think he's proven he can do the job and, and uh, that we should support him in, in that. Um, that's how I feel about it. I could go into more detail, but I'll let others talk. Jamie, I see your hand. Yeah, thanks. Uh, we had talked about checking references, but I know you didn't wanna, felt like you didn't wanna overstep bounds. I don't, have we come up with any decision that's how that's going to happen, if that's going to happen, and what that would look like. I've, I've said I'm more than happy if council blesses me to do that, or if, if somebody else wants to check references, you know, we can find a different way. Um, I have not gone beyond, you know, where we were last time we talked about it. Does anybody else have any thoughts on that? Well, unless, unless we choose Justin, I think we ought to check the other two. I mean, references should be a major part of any time you make a decision to hire anybody. I don't disagree with Paul. If we don't hire Justin, then I think we'll need to do that. Okay, you said it a little differently. Mm -hmm. I said it differently. Well, okay, maybe I maybe I heard it differently. Okay. Right. So does, does 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 council want the next step to be a formal reference check? You know, we, not, we can't make we can't make decisions today, but the goal is to determine direction. Yeah. Right? And and you know it it. It's a good point. It's a good point. Yep. Well, so let me let me ramble. You know, if if we all feel that Justin is the choice and want to give Justin the, the chance. There's no point in checking references with the other candidates. Mm -hmm. okay. if, if we if we all don't feel, or if 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 we all feel that we want to still explore the references, then I guess I'd like to discuss the process for how for what you want 
me to check, ask, or if you want me to be doing it at all, to check the references and how you want that information brought back so that everybody can understand the information that's heard. I think it's your place to do that. And I think we are going to have to simply take a straw vote here and find out where we want you to go with that. But I think that we're here for discussion on uh, more than that. So um, I'll, you're, the, you're the mayor and you can choose the timing of your meeting, but that's what I'm thinking. I don't know if that's clear. I hope it's clearer than the last thing I said. <laughs> I thought it was uh, so now you have your hand up. Yeah. Um, so in my experience, in, I'll have to call you back. In hiring, um, generally references are checked when a candidate is picked, and um, we want to see if there are any red flags or anything in their past experience. Um, and if then that is happening to the next person and to the next person. So at least there is a step of we want this candidate above the others. And here is we are going to go check references to make sure that that person does not have any red flags from previous um, years of work. That makes sense to me. I don't know if I can ad address the nom or not. Have you been able to watch the, um, I'm curious if she has been able to watch the videos of the interviews. I attended the first two and I watched the last one. Yeah. Zach, sorry, I see your hands up. Yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna throw the question out there. Of what's the point of this meeting? What are we supposed to get out of it? Pigeon, come on. Come on. Well, so, so Zach, I mean, first of all, I think it's good that we, we have a chance to talk to each other on a topic directly. Um, and this is an important topic. Okay, what was pretty clear to me after I made my comments under the mayor report about the manager thing is that there was, it, it, I felt split. Okay, I felt like it was split. So it, it didn't seem, it didn't seem logical to just put a, a question on the agenda that might end up three to three. I mean, frankly, we've had a lot of those. Okay, now you know I'm 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 interested I'm interested in talking about whether we can be united on this, like we've become united on some other things in recent times, and I think that it makes the most sense to do that if there if there are people that are if we can be united around one of the people. I, I think I think it's important that we talk that through. So is it for us to be united or for us to talk it through? Because those aren't necessarily mutually inclusive. Well, Zach, work with me. I mean, I'd like to hear what people have to say. I mean, all right. Well, and, 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 and see and see where see where we're at with things. Um, you know, it hasn't been easy getting everybody together all the time. We've had a ton of meetings this year. We've done a lot. I mean, I don't. I haven't tried to count them all up, but it's there's been a ton of them, and some of them I've been criticized for scheduling. Some of them people haven't been able to attend when we have scheduled them. You know, I just think that this makes sense to have, and I'm thankful that you're all able to, to pick the earliest opportunity because everybody wants this process to be resolved quickly, at least was the message I got at the last meeting from some of you, and I'm ready to resolve it. I think it's pretty obvious who the candidate should be or who the, who the, who the choice will, should be. I'll, I'll throw out there then for purposes of us discussing with each other and making opinions known, um, and, and this is probably grumpy grandpa opinion, but this conversation should have happened before we did the, the notice, before we did the description so that we could have developed a, a vision of the person of the skills, the competency, instead of here's the person that we want. Now we're gonna talk about at the end of the process. It, it doesn't feel right. Um, I have philosophy from my experience working in many places, I value that. And if I don't support the candidate that you want, I'm now, an a-hole for staff and for the rest of council. And I believe I have a very legitimate philosophy um, that is valuable and, and is helpful. And so I, I, it's for me, it's hard to see what I, I get out of this meeting. 
I'm, I'm putting in, been put in an awful position because I have a different philosophy that we haven't been discussed. Someone's already been decided on. Um, and uh, I guess one, one little grand, grumpy grandpa thing I'll throw out there is where we paid what, 18,000 to OHM now. Um, if we had done the executive search through the MML, that would have been 10, 12,000 if I recall. And we would have had someone in the position four to five months ago. That's all I have to say. Zach, what was what was your objection to the job description and, and the re responsibilities that we approved together at that time? The job description is a generic, these are the things you do throughout the day. It wasn't a, we want someone who is good with building staff. We want someone who can manage council disagreements. We need someone who can build infrastructure it was a very generic, here are the basic things you have to do. It wasn't a vision forward looking document. Uh, if you look at other places, they, they do that, have done that much better. And so because of that, we weren't able to get applicants writing to that or self-selecting in or out, nor were we able to interview and look at candidates with that, those common vision pillars. It was all six different opinions looking at it. Zach, I tell you, I, I disagree. I mean, it, it talks, the first knowledge desired by the position bullet is ability to work as a leader and work well within groups as part of a team environment. That's exactly what you just said you're looking for. Well, I, I would disagree, but I've looked at um, postings done by MML for executive positions that are, are much clearer about vision as opposed to the generic, we want a leader who's a leader. So you're objecting to the process now, eight months later. I was objecting to the process at the beginning. Right, but rather than build it, you're objecting now, okay. I objected, it didn't stick. I sucked it up. Okay, I don't know if why or Alex's hand was up first. I didn't happen to know. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Alex. I need, I'm gonna okay. cut. Um, <laughs> I, I just have a question about that, Zach. I mean, the things that you just said you wish had been in the job description, in my opinion, Justin is a, a great example of someone who can, who, he, he exemplifies both of those things that you said. So I'm just wondering, do you think that he doesn't? And I, 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 mean, I don't wanna talk about the process right now. I mean, I know I, I recognize that you had objections about it. I was there for those conversations. But I also, you know, you were on the the subcommittee or whatever it was called. So I guess I I just, you know, you had you had a chance to to try to make it better, did didn't you? Like try to make it more of what you wanted at that point. I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not trying to start anything. I'm just asking honestly. Yeah. Well, I'll I'll start with that. Is that the charge of that group was to narrow it down to three people to bring to council. That was the charge and that's that's what we did um and so i try to respect string within the frameworks of the charge that was given to that group by council um and you know there are lots of different philosophies for hiring i've mentioned that i've worked in a lot of different places i have valued that i recognize that mayor keo has worked in one place um his professional career and so he appreciates that um it's different philosophy do you do you want someone at the beginning part of their career or in the fat meaty part or the end of the career and there are different reasons why you might want those at different times um and i'm not saying they're not correct but because we haven't had this it became like our our search for um city offices which before your time where we would look almost like um I call it a distracted puppy dog in a field with butterflies where we didn't have the checklist of here are the three things we want. It's like, here's a property, can we do that? Here's a property, can we do that? And so without that, the general vision, it's like, oh, here's a person, can we work with them? Here's a person, can we work with them? Not saying they're not working, but um, yeah. Sorry, I'm starting to circle back around now. Oh, can I can I just, you know, sure. one, one more thing about that. I mean, I'm gonna hold your feet to the fire a little bit on this. I mean, you didn't answer my question. Even if you don't support Justin, you know, you're the one who just stated that we're all going to be 
you know, something about the way that we treat staff and I'm not gonna repeat the other thing you said, but um, so that's why I asked the question, do you honestly feel like he doesn't meet those qualifications? Because it's one thing for you to vote no, and that's fine. And if that's your philosophical opinion and you really would prefer the other candidate, fine. But like, I'm asking that because if four of us vote yes, and he is our city manager, I feel like he would feel more respected if he knew that you did feel that way about him. And I think that's more important than whether or not, you know, I mean, if we can be unified, great. If we can't, we can't, but I mean, do you, do you see what I'm saying? Yep. Um, so for me, I I value someone who's worked 24 years in related fields versus seven years. Um, and I know it's not all the same, but I've worked planning and zoning from county townships and as a um, consultant now, and you can, you get a lot of ideas that you can pull in from that experience. So I, that's just my philosophy is that I, I prefer a bit more experience in rounding. Um, okay, Alex? Yeah, I have a question about the process. So I apologize that this is um, somewhat non sequitur. Um, so my question is, to what extent is it appropriate for Ms. Arab to participate in this discussion as she is listed as one of um, Mr. Breyer's references? Well, she's a sitting member of council. And I'm sure that if we uh, needed to get a different reference for Justin, he could provide a different name. But that was put together before we even knew we had a vacancy. So now, thank you, um, Alex. You actually brought it up before I was gonna say anything on that. Um, I have been hiring for over ten years in various um, capacities, in various positions, from my team members to dean of libraries at the University of Michigan. So. I'm a bit familiar with the processes of hiring and um, the things that are, that are around it. So um, from the perspective of the process um, and that why we are here is that position was posted. However, the decision was made on that, it was made. The position was posted, people have applied the interview committee has brought three names for discussion. Those three names or those three um, had in-person interviews that we all have either personally attended or have watched. So we are here to, between those three people, choose the best person we think that is now for this position. So we'll have other, we have thoughts and such, my experience is that interview committees come at the end together in a meeting like this, or if it's even extended interview committee comes together at the end to talk about the three candidates and pick the best candidate that is part of it. In terms of what you brought up, Alex, um, I will definitely not be just in reference. Um, as Sean mentioned, um, he um, applied months before even we had vacancy. So at that time he approached me and said, can, can I be a reference? And at that time there was no conflict. So I said, yes. Um, but he also has three other references already on his list. So generally it's easy to cross one out. And if we decide Justin is the person to um, approach uh, or to, to think about as the top candidate, then the other three references can provide ample um, opportunity for, for answers. So from wh where I stand, I think we have three candidates. And at this time, talking about the fairness is to talk about the three candidates, what they have provided us, and try to find the best person um, out of all. At, at some point there is a vote and we'll vote, but if we can discuss and talk about the 
pluses and minuses of candidates, I think that that can give us some light and maybe bring things that one person have picked out of the interviews and um, their applications and other person might not have. And that discussion will help shape this together. <clears throat> Jamie. Yep, thanks. Sure. So yeah, I guess the last time we talked about this, I had indicated for me, it kind of came down to Justin and Elle. I can say I was, you know, I was not part of the subcommittee process. So I was able to review some of the other applicant materials before honing in on the three that were recommended by the subcommittee. And I was impressed by the paper presentation, you know, on paper presentation via resume, cover letter, et cetera, of all three candidates. When it came time for the interview, I think I was initially, I thought Al and Justin were the stronger of the two interviewers for sure. At the same time, I, I did find myself intrigued by some of the experiences that Bill or, or William had. And I, I thought, well, you know, I could see going that direction too. But if I felt like they were all competitive on paper, I felt like Ellen Justin stood out based on the interview process. I think it is tricky when you have, you know, sort of somebody who's already part of the system versus somebody who's outside, because I think so much more is known about the person that you already know and you've already been working with. And so I feel like this meeting is sort of somewhat set up you know, and last time we talked, I mentioned, well, I think for me, it's weighing how much value do I want to place on continuity versus how much value do I want to place on fresh eyes or, or fresh perspective. And so we discussed that a little bit. I feel like this meeting is set up a little bit like, why not Justin? Because there are strong supporters of Justin and it seems like they're wanting to hear, well, why not Justin? And I don't know if there's a tactful way to go about it. So I just want to begin by acknowledging that and to say that, you know, we are talking about people here and this isn't about whether we like somebody as a person. Uh, it's about who we think is gonna best help the city move forward. So as I've been thinking about that, to me, process is really important and there's something that is dysfunctional about either council on its own or council working with staff or something. And I'm trying to figure that out, like genuinely, legitimately. So my guess is if you haven't already checked your email, I sent Justin a number of questions that I'd been thinking about mulling over because I am trying to figure out where is this coming from? Is it, and how do we resolve it? And what role do any one of us play in the resolution of that? What is the role of city manager when it comes to that? What is the role of the mayor? What is the role of any of us as individual council members or us working as a body? And so please understand that I am genuine in trying to understand to what extent a different city manager would help the dynamic. And, and I, I don't know, so I'm open to feedback. If people want specific examples of things that have been, you know, maybe I've been disappointed in, I could, I'm happy to list some of them. And I don't know if, I don't know that it's relevant to debate them, but I'm happy to put them out there. So, you know, for example, why not ask for help from OHM sooner? You know, that's one thing that, that strikes me. Uh, early on in January, we had a work session about city facilities and the fire station came up and I had asked, or it had come up about creating a general summary document of, you know, we have new members on council. Can we get some sort of summary document to say like how we got here and some sort of review document. And my recollection is that there was a, gen a general consensus that, yeah, sure, we can do that. Staff can work on that, but we've never seen such a document. Uh, more recently, uh, Julie Wilkinson was on the agenda to talk about Dexter Days. My understanding is she wanted to ask council for a contribution based on the email I think that was sent to us. When I was reviewing the packet on Saturday, I noted in Justin's update that it was illegal for council to make such a contribution. And so I reached out to Julie and I said, oh, hey, I'm going through the packet. I saw that apparently this is illegal. I just wanted to let you know. And 
she was surprised because that was the first she had heard of that. And so my first thought is, okay, well, if this information is making it into the packet, why wouldn't the person who put together the packet reach out to the community member and say, I just wanted to give you the heads up, here's this information. So my understanding is that she then reached out to Justin and that's why she didn't end up speaking at the meeting on Monday night. More broadly, I, you know, general service, you know, the city is in the business of providing services to community members. And I've heard from people who, who are unhappy with things that, whether they be business owners downtown, I personally had an experience before really getting involved with the city. That's kind of what started my involvement with the city is having drainage issues in our backyard and having a number of conversations with Michelle and, oh, you know, I said, can somebody from the city come take a look at this? Oh, we assure you somebody from the city will come take a look. They'll come take a look. They'll come take a look. We'll, we'll help get this resolved because we had a new build going next to us. And then suddenly we are having drainage problems that we had never had before. Well, nobody from the city comes down to take a look. I have to haul my two kids down to the city offices to get a copy of the drainage map to figure out where the heck the water is supposed to be going. And to this day, I still think whatever happened with the development behind us was not what was supposed to happen. And again, I'm not trying to make this personal, but people, it seems like they're wanting to have specific examples of why I think we might need new eyes or a fresh perspective or somebody who hasn't always been in the office. In the office. Uh, we also had talked about a couple of meetings ago, setting a special meeting to talk about the city manager search. And it was agreed that, yeah, we're the next meeting we're gonna be doing is a special meeting for the city manager search. And then all of a sudden we have a special meeting about 3515 Broad Street which is why I had some follow-up questions. Why are we talking about Broad Street? I thought we were gonna be talking about the city manager search. And I asked Justin, why are we having the meeting about 3515 Broad? Like who called this? Did you call the meeting? Did Sean call the meeting? And he said, well, I think the reason is so if people have any questions, they can get their questions answered ahead of time. But then the mayor said, well, the reason for the meeting is so we could get something done. So I feel like I'm getting conflicting information and I don't know. I said, I said both is. actually. I said I don't, both actually. Yeah, I don't know what the process is supposed to be. I just, this is my perception. Maybe there's new information that I can take in that will adjust that perception. But I, I'm trying to put it all out there. So no, I'm not hiding anything. I am trying to let you know the way I see things and I'm happy to hear other people's perspectives. I'm not trying to make this anything about personal attacks. Um, I, I'm not trying to accuse anybody of anything. I'm just letting you know things I've seen happen and they have struck me. And that's what gives me pause about wanting to continue with somebody who's always been in our city offices and why I would be interested in checking references for Al and further exploring that. Um, but again, you know, understandably, I don't have the same level of experience with her. So perhaps there are those same issues with her, but I haven't been working with her in that same level of detail. So I understand it's, you know, it's an unfair comparison both ways. So I've said a lot. Rather than a rebuttal to the things I've said, I think it would be helpful to hear that same level of information from other people. Thank you. Um, I, I don't recall which hand went up. I'll go off first. Yeah, I'm gonna pass to Sonam. Okay, Sonam. Um, thank you. Um, I have a question for Jamie. Um, so the questions that you sent, uh, the email was forwarded to us today. Um, I'm assuming those questions were just sent to Justin? Right. Um, if we want to think about policies, procedures, and legality, we cannot really consider any of those questions as part of information. Um, that to my knowledge, puts us in a jeopardy because we have only reached out to one person out of the three candidates um, with about 10 questions that in interview time brings us to about 40 minutes of inter additional interview time. I'd be happy to share them with the other candidates. Um, we can either do that or we, can, we cannot consider those questions. It's, um, is that um, it interferes with the whole notion of fairness. Um, and there are two sides of that. One is that Justin is our interim city manager. So as you said, there are things that we might see or um, ex 
experience specifically that you might not like. But also we have to consider that we have been asking him to do the job of two people and there are so many things to do. And, and in that sense, we also have access to know what he does and how he does it. In reference checks, how often people are come and say, give you examples like that of the person that worked there did not follow every single thing to, to the best. So generally the, the references will not bring this little level of detail that you might see from Justin because you see that every day. And the other side of it is that the situation that has been created right now with these questions is that either Justin can say, this was not fair to me because there were questions asked that could have been very easily asked from other people or the other two people come and say that it was not fair for us because you gave this person another 40 minutes of interview chance that you did not give us. So my recommendation would be because the, some of those questions are in a way that were specific to our city and the other two people don't have the ability to answer them that we just don't consider the information that was shared with us as part of this evaluation. Well, are you ready to go next? Yeah, sure. I mean, I guess that sort of leads me to, and Jamie, I, I heard you don't want a rebuttal, but you know what, you can't control everything. So you talk about how you like process, but that what my, what I just heard indicates to me that your process is not always the best process, and I feel like I feel I feel like that's the way that we get talked to as a whole by you a lot of the time is like, and I I'm also okay. I'm going to depart from that and say managing a city is a giant job, and I don't think any of us has ever had that big of a job there are always going to be problems there are always going to be complaints and you're right even if we went with the fresh set of eyes that person same thing's going to happen to them we're all going to have problems with that person from time to time we're all going to have problems with justin from time to time everybody has problems with co-workers from time to time so i just i feel like i just feel like I don't think the city is that broken. I think we have a good quality of life here. I think that most people believe that. And I think that that's a direct reflection of our staff. And I think that nothing like blew up and went haywire when Courtney left, which is a testament to Justin's ability to, you know, provide continuity. And I mean, I'm, I'm not saying the other two candidates were not good candidates. I, you know, I agree with you. I think Justin and Elle both interviewed well, but I just think that, you know, at the end of the day, I don't think the city's broken. And I think that, you know, that's maybe a fundamental difference that some of us have, a fundamental difference of opinion. Jamie? Yep, thanks. I'm absolutely, I mean, I did not, it did not occur to me that the questions I asked of Justin was affecting the process. So I appreciate that feedback. I would be open to sharing those questions with the other two candidates. Looking at the questions though, it's not clear to me how many of those questions are actually applicable to them. Um, and, and these are questions I could have been asking of our city manager at any time. So, I don't know, I, I appreciate continued conversation on that. So, you know, for example, to say, how do you determine which correspondences from the public make their way into the packet? That's, I've asked a number of questions about processes and procedures about the city throughout this whole time that wouldn't be relevant to another candidate because I'm asking like, like it's tricky because he, I'm, these are questions about how the city is functioning right now. 
and that's useful to me as a council member right now, whether he's the interim or permanent, it's not necessarily determining what's what the decision is. It's helping me understand what the process is now, because like I said, my perception is there is something that's dysfunctional about the process. And so I'm trying to learn more about the way things are working now. And I don't know how somebody outside of us can give me information about how the process is working right now, but I am open to sharing this set of questions or some other set of questions with other candidates. I'm not trying to set it up. So it's unfair and equitable. And I will also say that I think this happens a number of times where th these meetings are set up to say, I wanna know what you think. I, I wanna hear what you think. And then people are immediately shut down for sharing what they think. I don't think there's any faster way to quell discussion than to have somebody put themselves out there and then shut them down. I can handle disagreement. And sometimes maybe that's all you need to say. I disagree. I respectfully disagree with the points you raised or I hear what you're saying. That was your experience. That's not compelling for me to change my mind. Thanks for sharing that. So so before I um, call on Sanaminwa again, um, and, and maybe I'm maybe I'm the one that's being overly sensitive, but there's no setup here. I don't know what setup means. I, I think my my role my role as mayor is to try and help facilitate discussion. Now sometimes that discussion doesn't lead anywhere. Sometimes it does. Uh, I'm certainly not trying to shut down anybody from saying anything, but I don't. Jamie, I don't know what you mean by the word setup. You know, everybody was, every every workshop that we've had this year, the ones that we talked about when you and I had our little first introduction together that I said I wanted to get everybody together to start talking together. All of this is so we can get to know each other and talk through things that are important that affect this this town. And and I don't know how else to do it, okay? The, 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 the agendas that we have every two weeks are long and just don't create enough time to have a lot of these conversations. So I work in the ones as best I can, okay? And I know we've had a lot of meetings, the, the goal setting meetings, the budget workshops, we've been doing that for years. And it seems to work. If people can tell me why that's not working, let me know, okay? And I and don't, don't just grab the fire station and point to that and say that we're dysfunctional because we can figure that out. We have, we, what you made the comment at the last meeting that we've been working on it for X number of years. Well, that's not really true. We worked on it for a while and then we took a time out and then we've been working on it again. Okay, that doesn't mean we're dysfunctional. We just haven't found the right answer or found the found an answer that four people agree with. We did buy property two years ago. That was a significant step. Nobody's been able to take it further from that point. Okay, but, but we're not dysfunctional because we have these conversations and nobody's being set up by having people come together in an open forum where anybody can listen in and talk. So I just wanna say, I, nobody's been set up, but this is my, my attempt to get all of your feedback on the table so that everybody can hear it at one time. And I think that's what we're supposed to do as a board is talk to each other. Now, I, I, I appreciate it. I, I, you know, I, I don't want people to be cut off. I do think it's okay to have a little back and forth. I don't think that your questions were intended to make the process unfair. Okay, I, I think that some of those questions as I've read through them and I only got a chance to read through them quickly, the answers here at the end of the day, you know, some of those questions I thought were answered before, but maybe they weren't written down as answers. So it's, it's fine to be brought up again. I don't necessarily see this as turning our process upside down. I think that any well-run organization typically looks from within if they have a strong person that can take over and keep the momentum of things going. And I, I, so I, 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 don't, I don't have a problem with the questions, frankly. I don't have a problem with uh, the disagreement in, in asking them. I, you know, I, I do wanna be fair to all candidates. That's why I asked today, I'm not sure what to do next. I'm, I'm, I, I know how I feel and I'm trying to be honest with you on how I feel about it. If there are steps we should be taking with all three of these candidates, I think we should talk about those. But I, I agree with what Sanam said earlier, if there's a preferred candidate, 
and we can figure that out without a formal vote, so to speak, then we should be doing whatever the logical steps are with the preferred candidate, i.e. you check references, you might begin to discuss talking about a contract, you might be talking about terms, you might see what comes out of that. It might be that candidate A, whoever it is, wants more money than we could afford or want to pay. Okay, but there, there's, there's things we can be doing. So I'll, I, and, I, and that's all I was trying to do was solicit input. And I value everybody who's on this call in providing that input. It's awkward because usually we look to our city manager to lead and this is about choosing the city manager. So I've done the best I can as one of the leaders of the council with Marie's help to run a very fair, transparent process that involved all of you. And I, I'm not a big fan of committees. Everybody knows that. I don't like, I don't think committees, <laughs> committees are serve a purpose. The committee served its purpose. We got out of committee and we're talking as a body of seven. Right. Previously, maybe six, but seven now, which is good. So I'll stop rambling. Wah. Thanks. So first of all, Jamie, I, I apologize for my frustration. And I, I'm, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think you may have been talking about me shutting you down. Um, and I just want to say that I think I'm like, pro I'm processing through this right now that I think you and I just have very different communication styles. And I think I'm coming to realize that I feel shut down by how much information you tend to throw out at us because it makes me feel like in your mind or I don't know, it makes me feel like that's what we're, I don't know. It just, it doesn't allow me to think. It doesn't allow me to think on my own when I'm getting so much put on me from one person. Um, and, you know, good or bad, that's, that's, the way that I emotionally react to that. And so I apologize for, you know, turning around and being frustrated and not being very nice sometimes. Um, that said with, you know, about the idea of not having, like, I, 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 my position is clear on this topic. I think it's been pretty clear consistently, you know? So I just guess I don't really know what else I can say. Um, so it's like, in terms of not trying to sort of counter some of the other things that are said, it's just, that's where I'm at with it. And I think we need to move on. I mean, I you know, we just need to move forward. I think, well, I think you're done. Okay. Zach? Yeah. yeah. And then Paul, sorry, I'll go to you next, Paul. I'll let Paul go first since he has. I'll go ahead, Zach. Well, this this isn't necessarily related to the manager position, but to general group dynamics. I would suggest that um, when we're having these open discussions, if that's the point, instead of responding to somebody that that's not what we're doing or that's it's not a setup, is to say instead perhaps that wasn't the intent. Why do you feel that way? As opposed to just no, you're wrong. Um, because that way you don't learn why people are coming from that position or why they're having those sensations here. And that's all. Was that aimed at me? I don't think I said, no, you're wrong. Who was that aimed at, Zach? Well, you, you pretty much said, you said, this is not a setup. This is not a setup. And yeah, well, I, I, wanted, I, wanted, I wanted everybody to know that I, I, I'm touchy about the word, but I, that doesn't mean Jamie doesn't have a chance to explain what she means by it. Paul? I'm it? Okay. Well, we could take a vote right now, <clears throat> and it'll either be uh, four to three or three to four, one way or the other, that uh, Justin will be uh, our manager or he won't be, in my opinion. I don't think there's anybody going to come up with any other scenario that that's what's going to happen. 
Now, if that's what we feel that we are going to do, we might as well take the vote and end the meeting and move on. We said this is not a meeting that's going to be a vote, but the fact of the matter is that when we come out of it, it's going to be some direction that we all feel as a council it's going to take. I guess I've never been afraid of change. Uh, when it comes to new people and what they feel that they have as a uh, as the skills to 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 do what they applied for, and so when I look at the process that we have had, I think I stated in the very first meeting we had that that Marie said clearly that the staff is very comfortable with with Justin. To me, I and I've said it. I said it out loud. I still say it today. I think it was inappropriate for that to happen. I've heard that this, since that time, the staff is very comfortable with Justin. I've heard the mayor say that you think numerous times now that, that Justin can do the job and he's comfortable with, with Justin. I don't know if all those things are appropriate. We have a council have to make a decision of who we feel is best and do we need staff to tell us that that's it when they work with him sure common sense will tell you that they do not want a new person because they're comfortable with this one unless they got a real hassle with the last one they're afraid of change just as much as we are how's that person going to be are you going to be nice to me? Are you going to be kind? Are they going to support me on my recommendations? The activities that I perform in the city? Or are they going to be confrontational? Those are all things that go into the decision that anybody makes when they want to either keep the person that they have or find a new person. And if you know, if you know anything about the business world, they don't always hire the same people. New people all the time come in to run a business. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. So, <clears throat> how do I feel about the process here? I think the process has been okay. I would be willing to vote on who I feel was the best person. And to make judgments about how somebody somebody writes something down on a piece of paper and what they felt they were doing and when their their motives for that at least it was out in the open and wasn't it you know, wasn't uh <clears throat> hidden so i think we're just about in the same decision making process with this vote as we were with the City Hall, whether we wanted to do that one or not, because there were some people that didn't vote that way. Some of us felt that it was best that we move on with this one so we can move on to the fire hall. But I don't know if that was a setup or not that we'll do. Yeah, sure, we'll move on to the fire hall. We'll, set it. we'll have this process. We'll discuss it. And then we'll go ahead and vote. We haven't had a meeting, a public meeting about the fire hall I think in five years, maybe four. Sure, they have this opportunity to come here anytime they want to and speak to us. As far as the meetings were there, we've never had one of those. I question why. And I think the reason was is because there were some differences. Everybody wasn't on the same page there. And that and that and that and we saw some divergent views. But <clears throat> If we don't want to waste any more time, vote for Justin. If you want to not waste time, but try to figure out if there's a better candidate, something that, that we feel would do the job, then let's go through the process. Find out, which I, I guess I was surprised, but probably shouldn't be because I was on a committee and we didn't ask for references already. Or was it cut and dry? We didn't need to.
Will Justin do the job? Yes, he will. He can do the job. Can somebody else do it better? We don't know that. Paul, are you done? Sanam has her hand up. I'm done. I'm done right now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just make sure. Thanks, Paul. Um, yeah. I have one question since I, you know, I have only attended from a citizen's perspective these meetings so far. Um, I heard that there were some um, concerns with um, the performance and things that Justin had done. In the last seven months, how much of that feedback was given to Justin um, on the items that we you felt that he had missed. Um, I, I just want to know that if there was any feedback given to to him in the job that he's doing, um, and was he given a chance to fix anything that um, any of that feedback that was that he was given? Are you directing that at me or, or anybody? Uh, anybody who has had points of, um, sorry, I can't remember who, who brought up some points. I think Jamie had a couple of things and others um, might have. I, I'm asking this from the perspective of, um, when I'm looking at the resumes and, and the, you know, the notes I have, for resume and, and the work they have done um, from the perspective that is easy to, to say, okay, we know the work that Justin has been doing and these are the things that are missing from it. Um, there is also that portion of like, have we provided feedback for the things that we have not been happy with and if we have provided feedback, do we give him a chance to fix those? So, so Sanam, I can, I can tell you from my, both my professional and, and elected life, if there's something that a past city manager has done or a current city manager has done that I have felt should have been done differently, I would not hold back to tell them that. Most employees, I, I believe, appreciate uh, communication when something is a, a current point, not wait three weeks and say, hey, you should have done this, okay? Um, that being said, typically, typically, we would do an annual review of our city manager each April. Now, given that we're in the middle of the process for hiring, it, it, I didn't push for that this year because I didn't think some I didn't think it would be exactly appropriate in the middle of the fact that he was part of the one of the final three. But normal normally we have done just about every year uh, and we go into closed session to do it because we're allowed to do that as part of a, the closed session rules. We'll go into the closed session to do a city manager review. But I, I can I can tell you that. Uh, if on a Wednesday he told me that he didn't think he was going to be able to get the packet out, I always t told him, okay, thanks for letting me know. You know, that's okay. Just send a note to council so they're aware as well. But most of the time, if that, you know, if that was the case, it, it was because he was waiting on some information and he wanted to make sure he had it for the meeting. So it wasn't, it wasn't like he was doing anything wrong. Just you know, some of it's timing. But I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. He didn't do anything wrong from my perspective over the seven months. So I didn't have, I didn't have conversations like that with him. I don't know if others did. Thank you. Jamie, sorry. No problem. No, just two. Me. Two of the examples I gave about not asking for help sooner, or you know, the issue with Julie Wilkinson, those just came up. I have not reached out to him about those. Uh, 
some of the you know concerns of other business owners and my personal experience with the drainage issues, those are either things that have happened before I was on can on council, or I guess experiences that I don't think it's my place to be working with the city about. There are things that happened in the past before I was on council, just things that I've heard about. Uh, generally, you know, in this question about, you know, why not, like we don't have this facility summary document that it seemed to me, I haven't gone back and found the spot in the video. Well, again, my recollection is that we agreed to have something prepared and put together and that didn't happen. So one advantage of a wait and see approach is you get to see what sort of initiative somebody has in that role um, versus are they somebody who's just responsive when somebody is constantly asking things of them versus what do they initiate on their own? So I appreciate the point you're making. Is it fair to hold somebody accountable for something when they don't even know that that's a thing? I wouldn't say that the you know list of concerns that I raised were um, of a nature where they were sort of repeated and tangible and in a way that I think I would have easily been able to provide feedback, but I appreciate that point. Um, and I guess that would be my response that a couple of these things were more recent, like, like from the last meeting, other things were before I was even on council or they were experiences I've heard from other people again, which I don't think would be appropriate for me to be interacting with him about. Thank you. I mean, generally he has been very responsive to questions I've asked. I've appreciated his input maybe. And again, this, that's why I said, I'm trying to understand the process of, of where direction is coming from. I mean, I think I understand that, you know, council provides direction to staff, but then there are I don't know to what extent it can go the other way or you know there can be assistance from staff or the city manager is it completely from because sometimes it seems like things happen and i don't know where the direction is coming from and anyways so again it's me trying to figure out what the dynamic is please please don't hesitate to call jamie if you're confused about the direction that we're not trying to provide we're not trying to create confusion with any of this stuff we just had their hand up uh, donna mm -hmm. I just put mine out. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've tried to listen really carefully to, to each person here and I keep flashing back to, <clears throat> I don't know, maybe two years ago, three years ago. And living here, I felt that we were a cooperative group. If anybody asks me, what is it about this town? I say, well, there's a sense of place here. Everybody belongs. And if we need to, we take care of each other. I'm disappointed in the direction that this council seems to be drifting, which is into, this isn't right, that's not right. We never talk about what we're doing well. We never talk about our accomplishments. At least that's how I see it. And we're always back on, we made this mistake 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Then we have an argument about who's right about their timetable or not their timetable. It is time to look forward and to find out what can we do as a group including hiring a manager and make it the best we can make it and move forward and make it even better. Um, I also believe that one of the things that I have liked about Justin, and it was killer to me to hear people making comments about our staff and them being afraid. I think that part of what makes it go and has made it go over the years and staff can boo me if they want to, is that they do work together. They get along and they've always had for the last maybe 10 years, they've had a person that's a point person that's pulled them together. And to me, it looks like they've continued to do that. I don't go in the office. I looked at your question, Jamie, about um, how, who do you interact with most and couldn't figure out what was the point of that. But I can assure you, it's not me. Um, and uh, it's just not how I operate. And I, I wasn't with Courtney either, and nor Donna. It's just, I have operated on my own. So I don't wanna be a complainer. And I just got through saying, we don't do enough to go positive. So at this moment, I'm going positive and I'm not gonna look back at all the mistakes I've made. I'm gonna move forward. And when someone says something about a mistake I might've made, you know what? Any of us can change our mind at any point in time if we feel we've got more information and it's better. So I've taken up more than my time, but thanks for listening. Well, it's seven o'clock. That's all we posted the meeting for. <laughs> um, I, I mean, you know, is do you do you want do you want to move forward with an agenda item? Do you want? 
I mean, I, you know, I'm trying to trying to get a sense. I, you know, we, we have an odd number now, so there's no likelihood that somebody's going to can abstain on this. It's likely going to, as Paul said, it's going to end in a in a majority one way or the other. I'm happy to create an agenda item, and we can see where that goes, or or if if there's consensus to check references for a candidate. I guess we can do that or Jamie thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. I'll try to be brief. Right. So I, okay. my preference right now is L I would want to check some sort of reference check. Um, so I'm just, you know, I understand people are coming from different perspectives here. So I'll just be brief. My preference is L, but I would, I don't feel completely comfortable saying that without having checked references. Okay. Uh, I would be fine if you checked them. I, and related back to me or us, you know, that would be fine. Um, I'd be happy to do it. I don't have a strong compulsion that any vote we make needs to be unanimous. I, I think we all can be professional and if he finds out that there are people who didn't support him, I trust that he would be professional and about it and as would we. So I would rather a vote be a true reflection of our vote and not something that was agreed upon to be unanimous just for the appearance of that. Um, and I think I would, I would have to think harder about, and I guess this, this missed me too, about Sanan being listed at a reference, as a reference on his application. I, I would have to think harder about, is it sufficient that she's just not the reference that's checked? Or is there, would there be any more of a perceived conflict given our conversations about conflicts of interest. It's not, it's not clear to me. It's something I'd have to think about. Well, it was all public knowledge. Everybody's known that she was a reference on the application from the beginning of this. So it's not like there's been any secret there and we're not considering that to be, I'm not gonna call her as a reference. If anybody wants to ask her what she thinks, you can ask her on your own. Why? Never mind. Did you take your hand down? Yeah. Oh, I, it, it's 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 good when there's hands up because then I don't have to fill time. You know, uh, Zach. Not now. Yeah. Um, I don't mean to play whip here, but um, my reading of the room is that there's a four-three vote for a candidate today, and um, why would we keep picking at the scab to make things worse? Um, just my two pennies there. Well, I'm look, Zach. I hear what you're saying. That's that's sort of my read also. Uh, I'm happy to have an item on the next agenda, but I, I'm still happy to check references for people and get information back if that's what they would like to understand. I mean, we've we've been we've been doing this together for seven months. If that's the will, I'm happy to do them. But I I don't want anybody, I don't want anybody to say that we didn't do a step. But I agree with I agree with you. I mean if 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 there's if there's you know general support for candidate A over candidate B, then you know when we when we put forth a motion, it's likely going to follow follow along that lines when the when the vote is cast. But I don't want somebody later on saying that there wasn't a step followed, and we make we've been we've 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 approved the, the previous steps together. So if if you know if, is, is, let me ask this question: Is there general consensus that Bill is not the candidate, or Bill is not in the top two? I don't need to check Bill's references, do I? He is not for me. He's not for me. No. Okay, well then I'm happy to call all the other, whatever, six or seven references, whatever there are the, across the different L and Justin and bring back a summary or provide a summary to everybody on the reference checks. But I, but I mean, I, I guess if, if you know, the, the, to, to me, if there's a general, if there's a general support for whatever the candidate is, I think the motion of the next step as, as a formal measure would be to authorize 
some group of one or two to discuss a contract with that person, to discuss contract provisions and bring back a contract for formal approval by council. So it's, I don't, I mean, unless, unless, unless you, you want me to assume who that candidate is and go right to that person to do that step, I would propose that at the next meeting, we try to vote on which candidate to approach with the reference information ideally in mind, but we try to approach, we try to decide which candidate to approach for the purpose of entering into negotiations for contract. Does that make sense to everybody? And then, so, you know, so it's like a two meeting, a two, a two step thing. We pick the candidate, then we go talk to them and we bring back a contract for people to review and approve. And I, 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 I can send out, I can, I asked Marie um, uh, earlier today if she could find a copy of the last one that we approved with our prior city manager so people can understand what's been in the past contracts. I mean, the contracts have been pretty similar going back from Courtney through Donna. They might be a little bit different, but for the most part, they're pretty similar. But it doesn't mean that everybody can't get familiar with what's there so that they're not surprised by a term or a, a thing or, you know. Sit down. Yes. Um, so a couple of things. Um, first, I really would have, you know, I, I, I wished that we had heard more about the other candidate. Um, Jamie, my two can top candidates were um, Elle and Justin. So um, I was hoping that there would be in this meeting more discussion of things that are in both of their resumes or both out of their interviews. So there is actually a focus on, on the candidates. Um, that's one thing. Um, I, I had some thoughts and I was hoping that we could, you know, discuss each candidate and things like that. But um, the other thing is that when Justin approached me for reference to be one of his references, it was really months when he was applying. Um, and from then we have not had a discussion about his role um, and his position. Um, or I mean, like applying for, for this position. He just asked me in one sentence, will you be my reference and at that time with Julie still being on council and no um, perspective of me ending up here today, that was what was on his application. So um, from that perspective, many of people on in this council knew Justin a lot longer than I do. Um, and we have the same um, position of voting on a person um, that we know for a while. Um, it could have easily been somebody else that, that would have been a reference that could have ended up here today. Um, as Sean said, um, he will not ask me for reference. I would not provide reference because that would be a conflict and I understand it. Um, yeah, I was, I was hoping that we would have had a chance of delving into resumes and interviews a little bit more. Um, but I also understand that um, if there is a desire from other members of the council to um, just go into votes. Uh, what? Um, yeah, I guess just one thing about uh, what Sanam just said. You know, I, it, I could have, I worked with Justin in the exact same capacity that she did that's listed on her resume. So that begs the question, should I have disclosed that as a conflict of interest when we started this process? And I guess I don't want to start this discussion right now, but I just, you know, in the spirit of putting our thoughts out there, that's why I have concerns about this conflict of interest ordinance being too detailed and specific. Because as we've said before, this is a small town and there are times you can't avoid it. And you know, frankly, there's at least one other of the council 
um, the people that applied for the vacancy, Rich Bellis could have easily, he could have just as easily been listed as a reference for Justin. I mean, we can't avoid that. So, it, it, so I mean, I, I think to question, it, it concerns me to question this case as a possible conflict of interest, because to me, it's just really very clearly not. She's not gonna be checked as a reference. You know, I mean, we can put a line through it in the public packet if that makes people feel better. I, but I just, this is just a path that, that I don't like going down, I guess. All done? Okay, sorry, I, I paused for a second. Uh, Jamie? Yeah, thanks. So, right, yeah, I get, there's a 4-3 split here. If if checking L's references is not going to sway any of the four supporting Justin, I don't know that it's worth anybody's time. I appreciate your, your perspective to say, well, then don't come back and say we didn't follow the process. I can see both sides of it, but why get somebody's hopes up? I, I don't know. Like, why, why do it? Why spend the time? If I think we would need to hear from the four people who support Justin, is that gonna change their mind? Even if it changed my mind and ended up being a five, two vote for Justin because something came up in her references, it's still not gonna change the outcome. And I don't have a strong compulsion to delay it for that purpose. If it's not gonna, if there's no possibility that it would change the votes of the four people in favor of Justin. Um, okay. And I will just say, you know, the conflict of interest thing, keep in mind, it's about appearance and perception and I guess I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, but just don't create something if there isn't something there. Yeah, and I guess that for me, the appearance and perception isn't there for me on this at all. Yeah, I'd be curious to know what other people think. That's all I'm saying. So to your point, Wa, and I won't digress on this, Gretchen Rubin, Four Tendencies, she has a book. It's about how people make decisions. I'm really into personality tests. I'm an ESTJ. My top Gallup strengths is learner and... I, I take information. I'm somebody who takes in information when I make decisions. So I appreciate you making that point. That is exactly how I make decisions. I like lots of information. I don't do it as a way to drown people in it. I do it as a way to actually help myself make a decision. So, um, and I, I get that. I just, I'm glad that I was able to tell you that that is something that, and I'll work on it. I'll work on it for me. Right. Well, yeah, that's, I mean, it's helpful to know like how, yeah, in any relationship, to understand how people are thinking and making decisions. And so you were exactly right. I taken a lot of information <laughs> to make decisions. Alex? I understand that I don't have a vote here. And I also understand that I don't have nearly as much experience in life as anyone in this meeting, but I really would like to make my piece and say that I really think that Ms. O'Connell is the best choice for this position. Um, I have seen what Justin has done. I've seen that there was a very clear and smooth transition when he became the interim city manager. And I feel confident that he will continue to do the same good job that he has done now. However, when I'm thinking about where the city is in the future and when things can change, I feel as if Ms. O'Connell is best able to handle those many challenges. Um, during the interviews, I felt that Elle had a clear command of the room. She felt comfortable and she was taking those questions easily and answering them to what I thought was to a sufficient degree. Um, at times, I felt that Mr. Breyer was potentially nervous and he did, I say that one of his biggest fears is public speaking, I believe. And that made me a little bit nervous about how he would interact in the community. Right now, we are so lucky to have a group of staff that are so close knit and work well together. But to me, that's not a guarantee into the future. What if that situation were to change and there were an issue arise? I'm not sure necessarily that I feel confident that Mr. Breyer would be able to um, handle the situation in the same manner that Ms. O'Connell did. Um, additionally, uh, the things that really stick out to me is that Ms. O'Connell has extensive experience and that Justin just does not have yet. I am very impressed with Ms. O'Connell's ability to work with various people in the community. And I think that is going to serve her very well in this capacity. She has worked at Washtenaw Community College as an instructor. She's able to describe those concepts to people. She's also worked in different counties um, 
And I, I really do believe that she is going to be able to effectively present information to the community. Um, finally, as she is a CPA and we were thinking about what the city needs. Um, we do have that, that gap. We don't have a CPA and that is something that past discussions have indicated that we are looking for. And I, I, I truly believe that she is the best choice. Now, given that there are things that concern me about her application, um, she has not worked consistently, or, I'm sorry, she has not worked for a long period of time at one place. She seems to go back and um, change spots. And I do worry potentially that if she were chosen, would she stay for longer than two years? I, I don't know. I do feel confident that Mr. Breyer would stay, that he has shown that commitment. Um, I, I really just needed to say that. I, I, I've been thinking it and I need to put it out there. I don't feel as if it's going to have any influence on anyone's uh, decision or vote, but I've been thinking this, and I need to put that out there. Thanks, Alex. It was well done. Mm -hmm. Thank you. OK, then oh, Paul, go ahead. Well, you know, uh, as you all know, it has been stated by me more than once. Um, my belief in the most important thing to the city was the development of a new fire hall. Not on the same site. There's problems there, but we'll let that go by. So that's been my priority. Um, I feel that my discussion, my reason for Justin, not that he can't do the job, but that when it comes to this one specific issue, that I don't know if it's the word, I don't trust him or I don't have confidence in him that he will look at all the facts and all the opinions uh, that have been, that will be presented, uh, the criteria and make that decision. I go back to the very, some of the very first meetings we had when we had our, our other committee. And uh, when we had a vote the first time uh, there was Fred Schmidt, Jim Smith, Julie, and myself, four of us. We voted yes. Sean voted no to move forward on some one, one of the issues. And Courtney and Justin both voted as well, not to move forward. And I, that struck me as, why would staff be allowed to vote on these issues? So I brought it up. I think we had one more vote and then it stopped. And the votes were always four to one as I remember almost every time after that. So my fear is that the process as we move forward on this fire hall, which is now the main priority since we saw what was always claimed as a bigger issue, uh, maybe uh, that was a, uh, I know not maybe, it was a difference in perspective of what was the issue. We all knew there was a problem up the hall we created that problem sometimes ourselves by hiring more people into a space that was not going to expand. And yet the issues at the fire hall have never changed. It's still an inadequate space. It has problems. And if you visited there, you'll know that. The chief has pointed them out. The firefighters have pointed them out. You walk through it and you point them out. So the fact is, is I'm fearful that we're gonna have a heavy finger on the scale when it comes to make this decision. And I don't see Justin changing his opinion at all. And I don't think he has enough uh, I don't know the words backbone, gumption or willingness to stand up. to those that want the fire hall to be where it is. And so that's where I come from on board for Justin. And I see L as being one of those that has the ability 
and can do the job. And there's nothing wrong with change. I mean, it happens every day with people and businesses. And so from that perspective, that's where I, my, my vote comes down to. Nothing that Justin has ever done or will do in the future will be detrimental to the city other than the issue that I brought forth, in my opinion. And I'm not sure they'll have a, a ability to make that decision based upon the facts without pressure. And so that's where I'm coming from. I have had great relationship with Justin. He's done things that I've uh, asked questions about. He's been going to come back with those. The arts, culture, and heritage, all the things that we've done have all been wonderfully handled by Justin in his role. But that one issue to me worries me to death that no matter what the facts come out, the decision we've made, that he'll put the heavy finger on the scale to tip it one way or the other. Hey, Paul, Jamie asked um, Sanam if she was able to watch the interviews. Were you able to watch the inter last time? Uh, I, I, I felt you know, that was an issue that I had a problem with, with my with the issue with my wife, and I told you that when I started the meeting, that I would be able, was able to watch the first one. The other two I were not was not able to watch. Uh, uh, but I really went through the interview with all three of them. So I felt I was pretty well knowing what was happening with the candidates. My, no, my, my question is, did you watch the video of the taping? No. So you haven't actually heard Elle speak? No, other than in other than other than other than our, our our mock interview, you didn't hear the formal interview. No. Okay. All right. And that was not because I. Uh, no, I understand. Didn't I just your... wondered if you. I just wondered if you caught up to it. You were, you were... A, it was a technical issue, Sean. You know that with me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So let me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Jamie, you circled back and said you didn't want to waste time if there was a, a sort of a, a set direction or a expected direction. Um, did my did my suggestion to have a vote at the next meeting to try and pick the candidate make sense? And then based upon whatever candidate is picked, we would then proceed to enter into a potential contract discussions at the second meeting or is that too drawn out? I mean, if, if 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 there seems to be consensus for Justin, I could jump right to talking to him about a contract and bring a contract back for your consideration all in one step if you want. How fast do we want to go? I think it's Paul again. It's I, I think it's uh, the decision has been made here from the people that have spoken. I see no reason not to uh, uh, to. Uh, I see no reason to, to delay, move forward on it, get us a contract, and uh, I will still vote on a formal decision, uh, or no. And then there may be two others, there may be one of them, there may be no others, okay, but I will vote no. Uh, I'm not sure how the community will look at that as a 4-3 vote. Uh, I've known that there have been uh, superintendents, schools, that have had disagreement, and it's been a 5-2 vote. And then they take another vote at the end and make it unanimous. So it's public that it is unanimous. Um, that's something that we could possibly do. I think it'd be important that we think about that as the process with the public. But uh, uh, that's that can be discussed and thought about later on, but it doesn't have to be tonight. Okay. Well, I, if, if everybody's understanding then, then I will... I will um, I will email out a sample contract to everybody so they know what the past contracts have looked like. And I will mention to Justin that we'd like to engage in that discussion in preparation for the 12th. 
but I would, I would strongly encourage us to try to provide as much support to this young man as possible in whatever form of vote we take. If we need to let him know what the concerns are, that can be part that can be done as part of an immediate city manager interview or, or whatever you want to call it, city manager um, review following the hiring. It can be very clearly presented what the concerns are. So there's a way to get the points across for those that may or may not have been totally supportive, but I think that we should let We, we, we all owe it to get behind whoever we choose. So I guess everybody can think about that a little bit, how, how the best to do that. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll email out a sample contract and then I'll talk to Justin about the terms within the original hiring description. Um, I, I didn't know, Donna, is it the one on the left that's always first? Donna, you first, and then Jamie, or I can't remember Jamie, and then Donna. I don't know how the- I'm not sure either. Yeah. I was going to- Donna can go ahead. Okay, thanks, Jamie. Donna? Uh, yeah. Um, in terms of the contract thing, you mentioned going to committee with that. I'd like to recommend that Paul Cousins, um, and I'm saying this because he's known around the community as the teacher negotiator and all others. I'd like to su suggest that if he's willing or feels inclined, he would be part of that. If you end up not doing committee, I'm okay with that. But if you do, that's a, a, a recommendation I'd like to make. Thank you, Donna, for that. Uh, those kind words. And I have negotiated a lot of things, but uh, no right doubt. now with my situation at home, it doesn't, I don't think I'm going to have a lot of time to be able to do uh, that. Okay? I didn't think of that. I'm sorry. I should have <laughs> thought. All right. Don't worry about it. Thank you very much anyway for the thought process. I'll, I'll have an introductory conversation with him. And if there's anything that's outside the normal box of what we've seen before, I'll be happy to call Paul and talk it through. Okay. Jamie, thanks for waiting. Yeah, sure thing. Uh, I I would expect this would happen, but I just want to make it clear that I want to make sure there's opportunities for public input before we're making any decision, whether it's you know non range pre arranged or whatever. That this is on an agenda that the public has a chance to look at before the meeting and has a chance to comment on before we take a vote. And I would be in favor of some sort of initial evaluation type. Uh, meeting uh, with with Justin uh, at the at the start as, as you suggested like um, I think it would be appropriate to do that if, if we, yeah. you know I think that makes sense you can understand why I didn't want to do it during the process right 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 yeah okay okay does anybody have anything else to add I think I understand my marching order Zach see your hand up yeah I just not related to this but um I, I think it's important to share our our internal processes, our algorithms, how we get to where we are. And so I did want to share um, uh, something towards what Ms. Fisher said. I don't know if it was directed me or not, but it, it felt- It was not directed at you. Okay, but I, and I, I do often um, focus on what could be improved. Uh, rather than what's been good. And I'll say that is because my experience when I was in the Michigan marching band, I was the rank leader and I had about 30 seconds to provide guidance to up to six members of marching and playing and fundamentals. And so that got me in the mindset of focus on what needs to get better. Don't pat them on the back for what they're doing. Tell them that afterwards. So that's, if anyone's wondering why I'm always a Debbie Downer, that's because I, I like to focus on what, what can be done better. Um, there is another bit in there. Oh, um, I do love history. I just finished a book about, uh, Egyptian history. And a fun thing about Egypt is they haven't been a thing for 2000 years, but they were a thing for three and a half thousand years. Um, just <laughs> mind boggling. Um, and so I, I will say I'm laying my cards on the table that when I hear the phrase, we need to all come together and all support the decision. I'm, I'm remembering when we voted 6-1 to purchase property and the next packet said we shouldn't have purchased this property. Or when we voted 4-3 uh, or 5-2, I forget the final vote, and the next two packets had stuff about we shouldn't have done that. And you know, I, I try to do my best to look forward, but previous history is a very good indicator of what can happen. Not the only indicator, but um, 
So I just want to share that when I do hear that, it doesn't it doesn't sit very well because I'm remembering those other things. Um, again, just wanted to share to help anyone who may understand what the heck's going on in my noggin. That, Thank you, Zach. The only, it's not the only noggin that goes through. Donna? Yeah, um, I'm not asking us to think alike. I'm not asking for that. I'm asking us to be respectful and cooperative and act like we can stand being around one another and that we're not a split up council. That's what I was asking for when I was talking about working together, not to think alike, but to work together. Fair enough. Other council comments? Okay, I think we are adjourned then. Thank you for taking time out of a Wednesday. Everybody have a happy 4th of July. Safe travels if you're going anywhere. Good night. Thank you. Night. Thank you everyone. Take care, Take everybody. Care.